Hi, I'm Philip from Optimize Lab, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you three tips on how to get the best possible performance out of your Google Grants account while also abiding by uh, Google's policies and ensuring that your account does not go under uh, review or get suspended. Um, now, I'm going to be using this particular Google Grants account as an example because this account is meeting its objectives and improving its performance over time using these exact tips that I'm going to give you. Um, you can see here that this account um, during um, weekdays is maximizing the amount of allowable spend through the Google Grants account. So we're really maximizing that grant, getting the, the most out of it, which Google wants us to do. On the weekends, uh, the search volume is lower, but on those weekdays, we really are maximizing it. And this account has seen improvements and increases in the amount of the Google Grant that's being used, the amount of traffic that's being generated on a monthly basis and the amount, the number of conversions and those valuable actions that are occurring on a monthly basis. So it would, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you those tips um, and hopefully they'll help to improve the performance of your account also. So the first tip is to use a smart bidding strategy or an automated bidding strategy. And I'd recommend doing this using a portfolio bid strategy if you have a number of different campaigns. Now, the reason to use these bidding strategies is not only because Google recommends using an automated or a smart bidding strategy within your account, and that can improve your account standing, but also because it improves, it can improve the performance of your account. Um, now, one little uh, nifty thing that using a smart bidding strategy can do is it can allow your max cost per click, so your average cost per click, to exceed the $2 bid cap that is currently in place. Um, so if you're setting your bids manually, you'll notice that there's a bid cap of $2 that you cannot exceed. Um, however, using smart bidding strategies can allow you to bypass that bid cap. Uh, your bids can exceed that bid cap and that can help you generate more um, more clicks, generate more impressions, get a higher ad rank, and generate more conversions and get more value from your campaign and use more of that Google grant that you've been given. Now, Google is fully aware of the fact that you can do this using smart bidding strategies. Google's happy with that. Google doesn't mind. Google recommends that you use smart bidding strategies. So this isn't cheating in any way. This is just using the settings and your campaign in the most effective way possible. Now, I'm not going to show you how to set up the target bid strategy. It's quite simple to do. There's another video on the Optimize Lab channel, which can show you how to, for example, set up target CPA bidding strategy and the other bidding strategies. So there are many videos out there showing you how to do this. So this video, I'm just going to talk about the benefits. So we're looking at a portfolio bidding strategy that's being used within this Google Grants account. Um, and we can see that a very high target CPA has been set of $100. And this is higher than the actual CPA, which we can see here, the actual CPA is just under $14, $13.81. Um, so we've set a very, very high target because we want to make sure that the system is maximizing those bids in order to generate as many conversions as possible. Um, and this allows the system to increase the max cost per click and the average max cost per click can therefore be higher than the $2 cap. So if we look here, we can see that since the implementation of this automated bidding strategy, the average cost per click has increased uh, over time. So we can see 170, 178, $2, $2.96, and it's, um, gone as high as $3.10 here. So that's significantly above, that's 50% 
roughly above the bid cap. So the bidding strategy has been very successful in increasing the number of conversions that are being generated by these campaigns, increasing the uh, amount of traffic. So I recommend um, using either target CPA or you could look at potentially using a target ROAS bidding strategy if that's applicable to your account. Um, other bidding strategies that Google recommends are target uh, sorry, maximize conversions. I would recommend using target CPA though, because you can set that high target and that can allow you to push things even further. And this, this, um, change can really help, um, improve the performance of your account. So the next tip is to use automated rules. And this specifically can help with making sure that there are no keywords that have a quality score of one or two, because um, that'll help your account stay within good standing and avoid any possibility of account suspension due to low quality score. Um, now, in order to ensure that your keywords all have a high enough quality score, um, you can set an automated rule to alert you if any keywords um, fall below a quality score of three. And also you can set an automated rule to pause those keywords so that you can then have time to take a look at those keywords and take action and make those adjustments that are necessary to bring up the quality score. Uh, and if those keywords are paused, then they're not a threat to your account because they're not currently running. So in order to do that, you can set up an automated rule to firstly send you an alert. Uh, so you can select all of your keywords to make sure this rule is going to apply to every single keyword in your account. And then from this drop down menu, you can select create automated rule. So from here, you can, um, select send email or you can select pause keywords if you would like those keywords to be automatically paused and let's go ahead and select that so we can um go ahead and apply this just for good measure all enabled or paused keywords um or you can just select all enabled keywords that's absolutely fine condition add and then we're going to search for quality score so we're going to be taking a look at the quality score and we're going to be looking at below. So we're going to use this, uh, this symbol here, which indicates below, and we're going to add a three. So any quality score below three is going to be uh, included within this. Um, and we're going to click apply. Now we could also include keywords with just a dash, which means the quality score hasn't been yet, um, calculated but for this particular automated rule we're just gonna leave that unchecked and click apply um, now frequency we can set this to run on a daily basis and you can choose a time that works best for you um, for example um, you could choose uh, 8 a.m if this is something that you want to run in the morning so that you can then check and then also we are going to just leave all time because quality score, um, the, the time spans are relevant because it's a static, uh, metric. Um, and then we're going to, um, select for email results only if there are changes or errors. So if this rule makes a change, you will be alerted with an email. It will let you know that it's paused keywords because the quality score was below a three. Uh, and then you can just in here, select a rule name. So we'll just call this quality score check. Now, before we save this rule, it's important to always preview any automated rule that you set up to ensure that it's got, not going to make any changes that you would not intend. Now, in this particular case, there are no keywords that have a quality score below a three. So in this case, uh, no changes are going to be made. Um, that's fine. So we haven't 
set up the rule incorrectly and then you can just go ahead and click save rule and that will be set up for you and that's going to really help to manage the account because if you automate these kind of things then they're being checked on a daily basis without you having to log in to the account and they're making sure that there are no keywords which are violating that policy surrounding the quality score of keywords so tip number three is to use filters when you're analyzing your search term report. Now, if you're not familiar with the search term report, this is accessible under the keywords uh, tab on the left side when you select search terms. And what this is gonna show you is the terms people have typed in within Google before they've then seen your ad. So this is gonna give you an insight into how relevant your targeting is and whether all of these people um, are able to make use of your services. And reviewing the search term report can help you eliminate any non-relevant search terms which are not applicable to your charity and then enable you to add negative keywords so that you can block those non-relevant search terms forever um, for your ad ever showing for those search terms again um, however if you open the search term report you're going to see hundreds or potentially thousands of different search terms especially if you're looking over a period of a month or longer um, so what i'd recommend doing is filtering through those search terms so you can see the important terms that you should be analyzing very quickly um, so for starters um, you want to add a filter so um, when doing that the um, first thing that you want to add in is the match type so this will allow you to rule out keywords that you are already targeting um, so we're going to select broad match phrase match and also we're going to include exact match and phrase match close variant and apply that now we're also going to look at whether the search term has been added or excluded so has it already been added into the account as a keyword or has it already been excluded as a negative keyword because if it has then we don't need to be looking at that term for this particular um, job that we're doing right now so we're just going to go ahead and select none now you can also take a look at has that search term generated a conversion for uh the for your webs on your website uh has it been a useful search term because if it has maybe you don't want to be negative matching that search term um so the, say it can save us time by just selecting here less than one so basically zero um zero conversions all of the search terms we're looking at have not generated any traffic that's converted for us so we're going to click apply for that also um, and another useful thing we can do if we want to filter even further we can look at the click-through rate for that search term because ultimately um, one of the uh, policies that Google sets for Google grants accounts is that the account average click-through rate has to be above 5% so to help to stay with uh, above that benchmark to stay help stay above 5% what we can do is we can start negative matching and ruling out any search terms which have a low click-through rate and that can also help us identify those search terms which are not relevant because if your ads are not relevant to somebody they're less likely to click them so you'll have a lower click-through rate so what we're going to do here is select less than five percent and we could even go lower than that if we want to um view an even smaller number of keywords we could put three percent for, for the sake of argument but in this case we're just going to go for five percent and we're going to go ahead and click apply um, now also another useful thing you could do is um rule out certain words certain uh terms so you could um type in a word that for, for a particular search term that you want to always include so you don't want it included 
uh, with it. So you don't want it to be present within this report that we're creating right now, but that's just optional. Um, so what we've got now is a list of those terms that fit our criteria. Um, and we can look through those terms and ask ourselves, um, are these terms relevant? Are they connected with the mission statement of our charity? Um, are they mission critical? Um, are they, are targeting these search terms going to help those people that are going to see our ads, um, or not? And, and if the answer is no, if you're not going to be able to give them the information that they're clearly searching for, then perhaps, uh, that's something that should be excluded. So, um, you can run through the list and decide if it's something that you should exclude. So this particular um, charity concerns uh, lung health and uh, lung ailments. So when we are reviewing the search term report, we can decide, um, is this relevant? So for example, um, air pollution that may not be relevant enough. Maybe we want a negative match that. But actually, do we have a page linking to that, uh, to, 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 to the ad that somebody will see when they're typing in air pollution, which is giving them advice on dealing with any lung ailments that they can receive as a consequence of air pollution? If so, then actually that is relevant. So we don't want a negative match that. Um, and then we might go down and see, um, for example, we might decide that antihistamine, this is not relevant because actually we don't have a page um, on our website applicable to antihistamine. So maybe we should remove that from the targeting. Now in this case, it is relevant, but hypothetically speaking, um, if this was not a relevant phrase, what we can then do is quickly add it as a negative keyword. So you can see once we've highlighted it, we've got the option here at the top, add as negative keyword, and we can simply click that and we can add it to campaign level, uh, ad group level, uh, or we can even add it to a negative keyword list to make sure that our ads will never appear for the search term again. And if you do this, if you follow this process, and block each of the non-relevant terms that appear within your report. That's going to help improve the click-through rate of your account, your account, which is going to keep it in good standing with Google. It's also going to help get more relevant traffic to your website um, and allow you to therefore focus the uh, grant budget that you have on the search terms, which are really bringing you those visitors that need your information. And, um, for example, that can make a donation. So ultimately is helping to, uh, achieve the objectives of, uh, your charity. So, um, I hope this, these tips and this video have been very useful and informative for you. Um, if so, then feel free to subscribe. Um, our channel has a lot of useful tips that can help you manage your marketing campaigns, uh, and help to improve, uh, the performance of the campaigns that you have, uh, running in Google ads. Um, and thank you for watching.